organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, we'll take a look at how one group on campus is raising money to build homes for local families. Plus, hear how local business owners are reacting to a change to Washington Street. Matt Gatons had another big game on senior night, but that wasn't enough to end the Hawks' season with a W. That's all coming your way next, right here on Daily Iowan TV. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for tuning into your Sunday edition of Daily Iowa TV. I'm John Detcott. The University of Iowa community is mourning today after a Marine who attended the university was killed in combat in Afghanistan over the weekend. The Associated Press reports 24-year-old Connor Lowry, a gunner in a Humvee, died on March 1st. Lowry, who's from Chicago, joined the Marines in 2008. He was shipped to Afghanistan last October and was just four months from being discharged. According to the Associated Press, the death toll for U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan lies at just over 17,000. And for more on how the UI community is reacting to Lowry's death, be sure to pick up a copy of tomorrow's Daily Iowa. And every year, members of the Tippy Build Project raise money to build a house for one local family. And yesterday, the group held a putt-putt golf fundraiser in Coralville. Daily Iowa TV's Nick Rector hit the links to find out more about the fundraising process. Every year, the Tippy Build Project teams up with Habitat for Humanity to raise money and build a home for one local family. Yesterday, the group held an all-day putt-putt golf fundraiser at the Coral Ridge Mall. The putt-putt gave shoppers a little bit of fun and for a good cause, too. With a low price of two bucks, one lucky kid was good for eight holes of golf. And wow, how those dollar bills added up. Our goal was to raise $2,200 today, and I'm confident we made it. This is just one small step to reaching the much larger goal. Our goal is to uh, raise $50,000 this year and also finish the house in one academic year. This may seem like a lot, but the Tippy Build Project is no stranger to this type of work. After all, this is their fifth project. Nick Rector, Daily Iowan TV. And if you are interested in helping out the cause, Tippy Build takes donations on their website. And Iowa City drivers will soon be able to drive both ways down Washington Street following a recent decision to convert the business line avenue from a one-way to a two-way. While the change might be a convenience for drivers, some local business owners say it may not have a significant impact. I never understood why it was a one-way, so <laughs> I just think it's a good idea to, to have a two-way. Um, it will be take some a learning curve to learn to look both ways crossing the street, but other than that, I think it's probably a good idea. The city estimates the $61,000 project will begin late this week, but has not selected a construction firm. And still to come on Daily Island TV, we'll take a look at what one local dance studio is doing to help Parkinson's patients. And in sports, the Iowa women got bounced in the first round of the Big Ten Tournament. We'll take you to Indy for more on the upset. And that's coming up in just a bit, but first let's go to Muriel Kone for your local weather forecast. Muriel? Thank you, John. Well, it seems like we had a glimpse of an actual winter today. What looks like a full-on blizzard crept in most of the afternoon and evening. But this whiteout is no indication of what tomorrow's weather will be like. We'll actually see a gradual clearing of the snow tonight, bringing in a nice sunny day on Monday. This clear temperature will continue into the evening. And yes, it is technically not spring yet, but Tuesday and Wednesday temperatures seem to say otherwise. Check this out. It's going to be 64 degrees on Tuesday, so you might want to leave the heavy winter coat at home. The warm weather will also continue into Wednesday with highs in the upper 50s and a chance of showers during the day. These showers will pick up during the evening, but going into Thursday and the rest of the weekend, expect to see some similar temperatures to what we saw Monday. It will be a nice sunny few days jump-starting us all into spring break. Back to you. Thanks, Muriel. A Cedar Rapids man is facing assault charges today after he allegedly beat a female passenger while driving. A complaint from the Johnson County Sheriff's Department said 27-year-old Michael Clark was driving his car recklessly when he grabbed the back of the woman's head and began slamming it into the dashboard, leaving a large bruise. Clark also allegedly sent the passenger text messages saying he would show her pain and make the incident as painful as possible. 
And businesses across Iowa City are asking officials at the Johnson County District Court to temporarily prohibit a real estate transfer of a department store. The lawsuit filed late last week alleges the city of Corville set up unlawful agreements with an independent contractor to move Sycamore Mall's Von Maurer to Coral Ridge Mall. A hearing is scheduled for March 20th. And one local group is dancing with Parkinson's patients in hopes of slowing the progress of the disease. The classes began after the Eastern Iowa Parkinson Support Group joined with Leslie Nolte's Dance Academy in Coralville to offer dance classes for the patients. Recent studies show long-term participation in community-based dance exercise benefits those with the slowly progressing neurological disease due to the high multitasking and motor skills it requires. And now Daily Iowa TV's Ian Martin is here for your look at Hawkeye Sports. It's official. The regular season is now over for the men's basketball team. And yesterday, four Hawkeyes played what is likely to be their last game ever at Carver Hawkeye Arena. One of those seniors making quite the fashion statement. Those are Bryce Cartwright's socks on Saturday versus Northwestern. And on senior night, turnovers were a problem just like the last time. Iowa faced Northwestern. They had 18 in the game. Some positive play in the first half, though. Iowa had the lead for much of the first half. Matt Gatons with two of his 17 points on the give and go with Aaron White. Devin Marble taking the ball up here and gives the ball away to Reggie Hearn. Another turnover, and Northwestern had a 27-5 run of its own in the first half. They would take the lead into halftime. Now just one minute left in the game. Iowa down by five points. Matt Gatons, who else would hit the big shot and the Hawkeyes are only down by two. Carver Hawkeye Arena absolutely loving that. So the final play of the game, John Sherna, Northwestern's all-time leading scorer, misses the free throw. Iowa looking to tie the game, but Josh Oglesby can't hit the big shot. The freshman was wide open, but the Hawkeyes are down. And as Northwestern wins a huge game on the road, this will likely send them to the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. The Hawkeyes lose 70 to 66, but Fran McCaffrey after the game was proud of his team and liked that last look that Oglesby had. I would tell him to shoot it again. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what he was supposed to do. And, and I love him. He's going to be great. I think, I think we fought it off early, um, and then we got into a tough, a rough stretch where we consistently turned the ball over, and it gave them confidence, and it was like a crazy point swing. Other than that, I thought we, was, we handled it well. Turnovers in the first half, so 13 yeah. of them against the zone is you know, something you don't want to do, and uh, I thought we did a great job attacking it early on, but uh, you know, I think we just kind of let up a little bit. You know, we had a time when you need, you need to put them away. When you're up 15, you got to go to 20. And uh, we didn't. We turned it over and let them get easy buckets, and they're right back in the game and got confidence. So I think that was uh, the turning point there. After the loss, the Hawkeyes are now going to be the eighth seed in this week's Big Ten tournament and will face Illinois in the first round. The Iowa women's basketball team traveled to Indianapolis as a favorite in the tournament, but Iowa's hopes of a Big Ten tournament title, along with its eight-game win streak, were dashed. Our Kate Constable was on the scene in Indianapolis. Kate Constable here once again at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, and I'm sure you've all heard the saying, third time's a charm. Well, that wasn't the case today for the Hawkeyes, as they lost 80-68 to to the Nebraska Cornhuskers for the third time this year and snapped their eight-game winning streak. The Hawks got up to a good start in the first half, leading by as much as eight at one point. Morgan Johnson played well in the first, finishing with 12 points overall. And of course, our Sam Logic Melissa Dixon duo clicked a few times. But Nebraska's Lindsey Moore got a steal and hit a buzzer beater at the half to cut the Hawkeye lead 36-33. That was just what the Huskers needed to give them a little momentum going into the second half. They hit five shots from behind the arc, three of which were back to back to back. Well, Iowa didn't respond well to Nebraska's run. Hawk fans quieted down, and the Huskers ran away with the W. After the game, the locker room was filled with disappointed faces, but Sam Logic, Camille Wallin, and Coach Bluter were all able to tell us what didn't work well for the Hawkeyes today. Yeah, we, we, are, we don't match up very well against them, and that's why it, you know, our zone was really pretty good at their place in the second half, and, um, and, and it just wasn't as effective tonight, but you know, they were more prepared for it. Cold a little bit from the field, and and they, you know, pushing it hard in transition, and, and it was kind of one of those things, yeah, it felt like deja vu again, but it's the way it goes. And with just two weeks until the NCAA tournament, Coach Bluter gives us her thoughts about her team's chances of making it to the big dance. 
think we have very good chances of making the tournament. Um, our RPI is good. I don't think this loss today is going to take us that far. Down into the RPI, we're in the 30s this week. Um, usually when you're in the 30s, you know, it's pretty good. Um, good chance we're in one of the toughest women's basketball conferences in America. We tied for second in that conference. Um, you know, we played well down the stretch. That's something that people look for, and we played very well down the stretch. We proved we could play without Jamie. I think that was important for us. So I feel very good about our chances. I think we'll have a, a good contingency from the Big Ten uh, representing us in the NCAA tournament. Kate Constable, Daily Iowa TV Sports. Now all the women can do is await their fate with the NCAA tournament, but that announcement won't be made until next Sunday. Baseball and softball were traveling again this weekend, and with snow on the ground in Iowa City, it's tough to play baseball pre-spring bake. Uh, baseball was in Tennessee at the Austin P Classic, playing a near-flawless game to begin the weekend in its 14-point defeat of the Akron Zips. Iowa had 15 hits, but an even more impressive zero errors. The Hawkeyes couldn't win two in a row, however, as the host Austin P uh, won on a walk-off single with one out in the 10th inning. Final game of the weekend for Iowa saw the bats hot again as the Hawkeyes beat the Youngstown State Penguins by one. The Hawkeyes had one more hit, one less error, and needed one extra inning before sophomore Taylor Zutenhorst doubled in the game winner in the bottom of the 10th. The female counterparts the softball team, meanwhile, was in Oklahoma over the weekend. A weird weekend of travel for Iowa as the Hawkeyes dropped their first contest to Oklahoma State in Stillwater in extra innings. The next day, they played Oklahoma State again on a neutral site in Oklahoma City in which softball had its first ranked upset of the season in four attempts, beating the Cowboys, who are ranked number 23. Iowa came back from down 3-1 in that game, taking the lead on a three-run home run by Brianna Luna. Iowa's next two contests wouldn't go near as well, however. The Hawkeyes played 8th-ranked Oklahoma in both Oklahoma City and on campus in Norman, falling short both times, and the team is now 9-9 nine and nine to start the season. Lots of other occurrences this past weekend in Iowa Athletics. Women's Gymnastics posted their highest score of the year in a four-team meet in Texas, taking first place. Women's Tennis scored a 5-2 upset over 38th-ranked DePaul. And last but certainly not least, the men's Big Ten Wrestling Finals wrapped up today in West Lafayette, Indiana. Iowa, of course, was near the top of the standings, but finished third behind Penn State and Minnesota. The Hawkeyes had six wrestlers in the finals, but only two were victorious. Matt McDonough won the 125-pound division for his second Big Ten title, and Derek St. John won the 157-pound division. And tune in tomorrow night as we'll have full coverage and video reactions following Iowa's third place finish at Purdue. That was the weekend in Iowa sports. Back to you at the desk, John. Thanks, Ian. And now let's take a look at some of the top headlines from across the globe. President Obama met with a pro-Israeli lobby group in Washington today to discuss options for dealing with Iran's nuclear ambitions. Obama told the American Israel Public Affairs Committee that he hopes diplomacy backed by pressure could still be used to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. And emergency crews are still searching for survivors and assisting with cleanup after a rash of severe weather hit the Midwest over the weekend. The Associated Press reports that the storms, which included at least two F4 tornadoes, killed at least 38 people in five states. The Weather Service issued 297 tornado warnings and 388 severe thunderstorm warnings from Friday through early Saturday, according to the Associated Press. And Vladimir Putin claimed victory in the Russian election today, allowing him to maintain control over the country for six more years. Though complete results won't be in until Monday, exit polls cited by the Associated Press said Putin would get about 59% of the vote. And now take a look at this. Some snow enthusiasts took advantage of the recent cold weather when they made a giant puffer fish out of snow. The fish, constructed by a few teenage brothers, stands nearly six feet tall. Teens said they also put a small fish in the fish's mouth and said they've had quite a bit of foot traffic to check out their fish out of water. And only with Daily Iowa TV can you get a sneak preview of tomorrow's print edition of The Daily Iowan. Read about new health care legislation and how it will improve care for the elderly. Plus, find out where Iowa ranks nationally for cases of identity theft. And that will do it for this edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.